asked him what he had used and why. It was prescribed for allergies and respiratory problems. Um, I've been a, a lifelong sufferer of asthma. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I went to my team doctor at the time and we went to, in turn went to a specialist to see if there was anything else we could do to cure these problems. Um, and he in turn said, yep, yeah, there's something you can do, but you're going to need authorization from your cycling You have to body. ask for permission to take it. You have to show and provide evidence from a specialist that, that they will then scrutinize with three independent doctors and authorize you to take this product. And at that point then, once I have a certificate from the World Anti-Doping Agency and the sports governing body, only then do you take the medication. Now, the trouble with this particular drug is that lots of people say it is also a performance enhancer. Um, there, was, there was a German cyclist, Jörg Jaschke, mm. who says that well, after he'd taken it, he said, you're going to suffer less, you're going to be less tired as your recuperation is faster because of the anti-inflammatory effects. And you know, other people have said the same kind of thing. David Miller said it was the most potent drug that he's ever taken. Yeah, but I think there's the, they, they were abusing that drug in that era. This so they were simply taking more of it? More of it and abusing it. And, and, and this was to cure a medical condition and was, was it, it, the, the governing body, the World Anti-Doping Agency, everyone said this mm. guy is not, this was about, not, this wasn't about trying to find a way to gain an unfair yeah. advantage. This was about putting myself back on a level playing field in order to compete at the highest level. Now, um, use it three times. The first couple of times from your medical records, you were clearly unwell. But the third time, before that 2012 Tour de France, you were doing incredibly well. You, mm. were, fant you, were, you were caning them all at the, at the early stages. Mm. You were the favourite to win. There seemed to be no medical problem, and yet you took it again. Why? Yeah, I, str I really struggle in that period. June, July is, is the worst period for that. April, June, July, right, right through those months. And, and I, was, I was having problems. And, and, you know, when you win the race three weeks out from the Tour de France, as I did with the Dauphiné Libre, you know, you're the favourite for the Tour de France. The, the team at Team Sky, you know, we've got the medical team there, everyone, the coaches checking everything, saying, look, Brad, you're on track here. Mm. You, you're the favourite to win this race now. We need to make sure the next three weeks, is, is there anything we can help with at the moment? Well, I'm still struggling with this breathing last week. I know it didn't look like it, but I, I, you know, I really, is there anything else I can do just to make sure that I don't, I don't, this doesn't become an issue into a three-week race at the height of the season? Uh, and, and in turn, I take that medical advice and... Now, we should emphasise that nobody is suggesting that you have done anything illegal at all. But um, David Walsh, who was the journalist who exposed uh, Lance Armstrong and was invited in by Team Sky for quite a few weeks to watch you all and has been involved with you, says that, that it's not illegal, but it looks bad. Do you understand why he says that? I can understand the, you know, that it's still an open wound in our sport. And as I've said, this particular drug was abused back in that era. But I think, I think as I've stated, even with the needle comments that well, I'd made, this, this was about, at that time, if I can paint a picture of the landscape at that time in 2012, right at the height of Lance Armstrong and, and just before the crash, if you, as it were, with him, that the landscape, have you ever used needles? It was, it was always a loaded question with regards to doping, intravenous injections mm. of iron, EPO, etc. No one ever asked the question, have you ever had an injection by a medical professional to treat or cure a medical condition? There, there are two sides to that, and, and at that period in time, it was very much a, with a doping emphasis in the question. But you did say, I haven't been injected, I haven't used needles except for vaccinations, and that wasn't quite true, was it? Well, for medical conditions, and I think at the time, the, the book I was, I wasn't writing the book, I was writing it with a cycling journalist who was very knowledgeable on the sport and had lived through the whole era of the Lance Armstrong era and the doping era. So and from your point of view, needles meant have you been doping and the answer was no. All the questions at that time were very much loaded to, towards mm. doping. Mm. Now, um, at the time that Team Sky was promoting its, its latest uh, achievements, people were pointing to the, the vest you all wear with the blue stripe down it, and somebody said that blue stripe represents the difference between doping or, and doing something illegal, and we absolutely push up against the limits of what is allowable. We are really professional, we're really tough, we do everything we can to win, but we never ever cross that line. Do you accept that in this you have been absolutely up against the line? I'm not saying you've crossed it, but you have been nudging against it. We have rules and legislations in our sport, and we are governed by our cycling's governing body and while of the World Anti-Doping Agency. Now those rules are there. As athletes, we don't invent those rules. We have to abide by mm. the rules and Team Sky, especially team biggest cycling team in the world, 100% everything that they have done in this has it, it, been within the rules and abided by the rules that are set to us. 
and, and we are being scrutinised for abiding by the speed list, same within the speed limit. And of course, um, Team Sky has had a very, very um, hard time from lots of other countries. The French and others have been um, borderline uh, insinuating about your team because you have done so well. They ask, are you superhumans? What's going on? Is this the kind of insinuation that you're just going to have to live with now because you've been so Well, I think, I think the, the, the sport lives with that and whoever is leading in the sport at that time. And at the moment, it's Team Sky. They're leading the way. And, you know, they, they're setting the standard for everybody. And um, they're the best at what they do. And, and unfortunately, when you're the best at what you do sometimes, comes scrutiny, especially in a sport that has a tainted history. All right, you are, apart from being a great hero of the cycling world, you're interested in politics, you've always been a Labour supporter, uh, you invited uh, Jeremy Corbyn to help when you were editing a programme and so on. And I'm just wondering, there's a guy who's a keen cyclist, could do with a bit of help, are you interested in helping him in some way? Um, I don't think he needs it, to be honest. I've met Jeremy, lovely fella. Um, don't, you... I don't agree with everything that he's for. You know, I think the world is, a, is a, you know, a, a changing at a fast pace. Um, but one thing I will say, you know, ha having been my family historically Labour, my wife's family all historically Labour, I think Theresa's done a fantastic job in stabilising the country in the short term after the whole debacle in the summer. So Bradley Wiggins, thank you very much indeed.